MLB The Show 18 is very different from past iterations in regards to pitching. This year, uh, pitcher, more finesse type pitchers tend to be uh, a little bit more valuable than they have been in the past, and those flamethrowers from the past may not be as valuable as they used to be, although I still think the balance lies with the with the flamethrowers, I still think that they tend to be a tad more effective. It is now possible to use the m more of those finesse pitchers, and a lot about pitching has changed this year. So I decided that I would make an advanced tutorial to tell you guys, to, to educate you guys, I hate that word, educate, but to educate you guys on maybe how the top players are making adjustments and what exactly the top players are trying to do to be an effective pitcher in MLB The Show 18. What's up guys, my name is Beanie and welcome to my advanced pitching tutorial. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be going over a variety of different pitches and how you should use them and what situation you should use them and just how to best utilize those different pitches. But first, we need to talk about just the overall idea of how you should approach pitching in MLB The Show. And you sh really should approach it like you're playing a chess match, like a baseball chess match. You have to know your opponent. You have to very early, you have to identify what type of hitter your opponent is identify his strengths and weaknesses exploit his weaknesses and then try to avoid his strengths don't give in to your opponent to, to your opponent if they are a good hitter try to find things that they don't do well and uh, be unexpected you know do things that your opponent might not expect he might be thinking that you might throw a fastball in this situation or that situation well throw a changeup or throw a curveball or something like that do things that throw your opponent off guard and also uh, change speeds based on your opponent if your opponent has a quick bat or a slow bat we'll talk about those things a little bit later but that those things are very important to having success on the mound in MLB the show 18 and really in any MLB the show game okay so the first thing that we're gonna talk about the first pitch that we're gonna talk about is the four seam fastball the, the most basic pitch in MLB the show and it might not be as effective as it has been in years past but there's one very important thing that you can utilize it for and that is early on in the game you can test your opponent's bat speed now it doesn't really matter how hard your your guy is throwing you can get a pretty good idea of what type of hitter your opponent is is he a guy with a with a quick bat is he a guy with a slow bat if he has a quick bat you might not you might want to put the four seam fastball in your pocket or at least use it very sparingly because if if you have an opponent that has good pci placement and a quick bat it really doesn't matter how hard you throw a, a, a straight fastball he's going to be able to take advantage of it he's going to be able to hit it hard so if if he does have that quick bat you need to maybe kind of avoid the four seam but if he has a slow bat, if the four, if he's always late on the four seam, then you can really start to pound it. You can exploit that weakness of your opponent, and you've now identified it, and you know how you need to pitch him for the rest of the game. And uh, also, if you, you also need to vary your location depending on your opponent and how they react to the four seam fastball. If there's someone that has a uh, that has a really quick bat, you might want to throw more on the outside half of the plate because with that quick bat, if you throw it on the outside and he has a quick bat he's going to be a little bit early on it pretty often and he might roll over to like the first or second baseman with a lefty and you know the shortstop or the third baseman with a righty righty on righty or lefty on lefty that's what that, that's that's what i'm saying same handedness or opposite handedness but um yeah so really just you know if if he has a quick bat maybe avoid throwing the four seam that often but when you do try to get it on the outside corner so he is too quick for it so that's my that's my advice for the four seam fastball but mostly this year it's really not as effective as it has been in the past so you might have to look to other options to get your opponent out consistently and moving on, let's talk about change-ups. Any type of change-up, uh, a straight change-up, a palm ball, a circle change-up, um, even a splitter. I kind of categorize that in the same type of type of pitch because they generally have the same effect in this game. But um, the, the change-up is one of the most important pitches to the game because it allows you an avenue to pitch effectively to opposite-handed hitter, hitters. That That's not to say that they can't be effective against hitters of the same-handedness as your pitcher, but they definitely 
uh, the, their, their main purpose is to become an equalizer if you have a right-handed pitcher to that left-handed hitter because oftentimes a curveball or a slider just isn't going to get the job done because that's a pitch that's moving into the batter. So you really want to have a changeup on every starting pitcher that you have so that you can pitch so that you can pitch effectively to both sides because I promise later in the year you're probably going to be seeing opposite handed hitters a lot more often than you'll see same handedness hitters because people will stock up on switch hitters and just in, in general lefties in general so uh so yeah it's useful ver versus both sides but mostly opposite handedness and you really th this is another area where you really want to test your opponent's bat speed you want to see if he has a quick bat or a slow bat and then adjust if he has a quick bat you may have to adjust your whole approach to uh, to pitching to this guy you might want to have the changeup be your primary pitch your primary offering and you might want to try to throw it on the outside corner to really be able to disrupt his timing because he's going to be sitting on that fastball he has that quick bat he's ready for the fastball so you might have to get him out in front and try to get him to roll over that pitch and if they have a slow bat, the changeup is going to be used a little bit more sparingly. You've already established that you can get him on that inside fastball. So the changeup really isn't all that necessary um, to use all the time. The only, the only reason that you'll use it is to keep that pitch in the back of the hitter's mind so that he can't just sit on the fastball the entire game. You're using it as just a change of speeds pitch to keep the hitter off balance slightly. But, but like I said, this is adjusting to your opponent. Quick bat, you want to use it a lot. Slow bat, you, might, you just want to use it as a change of pace type thing. Okay, now let's talk about my personal favorite pitch, the sinker. I still believe that the sinker is the most useful and most important pitch in this game. Um, since they have slowed down the pitch speed a little bit, it's even more important now that your fastball has some bite to it. It has some movement, whether that be a cutter or a sinker or a two seam, it needs to have some movement because a straight fastball isn't gonna be fooling a lot of your opponents. And a sinker, the reason a sinker is so useful is that it disrupts not only timing, but it disrupts your PCI placement as well. Oftentimes a guy will try to hit the sinker uh, like he hits a four seam. He'll try to hit it at the point where it begins its down, down and in break. And that's not, you actually have to start your swing before that. If not, you're going to be late on that pitch more often than not. So it really goes uh, towards disrupting your opponent's timing. And, uh, and not only that, it also disrupts his PCI placement because it's going to look like a four-seam fastball out of your hand, and it's not going to break until the very last moment. And by that time, it, for, for most hitters, it's going to be too late. Their PCI is going to be over the ball indicator, and, you're, and they're going to roll over the pitch and hit a ground ball, and you have an easy out. So that's what makes the sinker just so useful is that not only does it disrupt uh, timing, but it also disrupts PCI placement. And that's not that's not something that can be said for other fastballs in the game. Usually they have to disrupt one or the other. They don't disrupt both. But the sinker, that's why it's so powerful, is that it does. It does disrupt both. I feel like it's definitely a superior pitch to the four-seam fastball, but still pitch backwards. And by backwards, I mean have the changeup be your primary pitch. Still pitch backwards. If, uh, against opponents who have proven that they're competent against the sinker. If your opponent continues to prove that he can hit the sinker consistently and hit it hard and square it up, then you still want to pitch uh, change up first and then use the sinker more as a surprise kind of pitch, you know. Now let's move on to cutters and sliders. I kind of group them together because I tend to use them in a similar fashion. Um, for, for, with cutters and sliders, you basically want to run it on the outside corner against hitters of the same handedness, and you want to run it in uh, on the inside corner against hitters of opposite handedness. That's true for both for both cutters and sliders. Another really uh, important thing is that I don't like to throw these pitches for strikes that often. I usually try to get swings and misses or very weak contact with these pitches because if you leave them over the plate 
oftentimes they can get hit very, very, very hard. The only exception to this is if you're pitching like righty on righty. If you can really spot that slider on the outside corner of the plate, that can be a very difficult pitch to square up. And if they don't swing at it, a lot of the time it will still go for a strike if you can get it over the corner. So that's probably the only time I would ever consider throwing that pitch for a strike consistently. But most of the time you do want to throw it off the plate, try to generate swings and misses with these pitches. Um, and uh, yeah, just because, I mean, th this is probably the easiest pitch to hit if you hang it because um, w if for whatever reason it seems like when you hang it you can all the, the hitter can also read it a lot better he can get his PCI to it a lot more effectively and it just feels like the contact window is wide open when you hang this pitch it's a lot different than like a sinker or a fastball in that sense I have a lot of trouble hitting fastballs that are right down the middle but with sinkers if I if you throw a sinker right down the middle it's or not a sinker a slider right down the middle it's gonna get hard 99 per, gonna hit, get hit hard 99 uh, percent of the time and uh, it's also important to note that the sinker and and not not the same I, I keep saying sinker the slider uh, not so much the cutter but the slider is pretty difficult to locate to opposite handed hitters um so i wouldn't throw that pitch a ton against opposite handed hitters but it can be useful if you can really practice on locating it effectively um basically what you want to do is you want to start it on like the the fat part like the middle of the plate and then try to run it in towards the back foot of the of the left-handed hitter um out of the zone you want to bury it kind of low um, or maybe in on that, ju just in on the hands. You don't want to leave that thing over the plate or it's going to get hit hard. And a lot of times it'll end up being a home run. The problem with this is that you have to be so precise. You have to get that thing starting right down the middle and then break just out of the zone. If you go too far inside, uh, you'll get that jump back animation for a ball or worst case scenario, you hit the batter and give him a free base. And then if you move too far to the left, you're going to hang that ball right over the plate and it's going to be the easiest home run your opponent has ever hit so if you plan on using the slider against opposite handed hitters you really really need to practice with your analog on on locating it perfectly so that you, so that the hitter will uh, pop out or roll over the ball or swing and miss because if you miss with it it's going to get hit hard fair warning the next pitch I want to talk about is the curveball, any type of curveball, the 12-6, the normal curve, the, the knuckle curve, the sweeping curve, anything like that. Um, I actually think that these pitches are better this year. They are a little bit more difficult to time, a little bit more difficult to square up, which is a good thing because in years past, they were a pretty ineffective pitch, and um, I wasn't a big fan of throwing them at all unless I was just throwing a waste pitch on an 0-2 count trying to get a swing in miss or something like that but this year you can be a little bit more liberal with how you decide to to use them um and uh yeah, but basically the general idea of how you want to use them is that you want to bury them in the lower half of the zone or at low outside the zone and you want to bury it inside to opposite handed hitter uh, to opposite handed hitters and you want to bury it on the outside corner to same handedness hitters um, that's just because, uh, for whatever reason, it's a little bit more difficult to get your bat uh, to those specific corners um, whenever you're dealing with opposite or same-handedness hitters. It just seems to be a little bit more effective. Um, I've had a lot of, like, to, to righty on righty, I've had a lot of low and inside curveballs that have gotten hit for home runs. And uh, same goes for righty versus lefty. I've had a lot of outside curveballs that have gotten hit for, for home runs. It just seems a little bit easier to kind of extend and get your hands to the ball uh, in, in those situations. So, yeah, that's that's my best advice for the curveball. But generally, I'm pretty happy about where the curveball is this year. It, it, they have made it a little more difficult to hit. The final thing that I want to talk about, and this is the most important thing, is tunneling pitches. And a lot of you may be asking, what is tunneling pitches? It's very, very important that you know. It's basically the idea of different pitches looking the same as they come into the plate. So it fools your, your opponent. 
Um, and, and the basic idea of this is let's say that you have that you have a pitcher that has a sinker and a circle change. Those two pitches play very good off of each other. The same way that a cutter and a slider play off of each other or a four seam fastball and a straight change up play off of each other. They have a very similar trajectory, but what they do do is they change speeds and it, and that, that can be very effective in fooling your opponent. But all, uh, another component of, of tunneling pitches is having it in the same gen or starting it in the same general location, but them ending up in two different places. So let's say that you have a sinker and uh, you start the sinker low and in to a right handed hitter. And uh, you throw that pitch, you get a foul ball or a swing and miss or something, and you have an 0-2 count, and, you, and, and you've kind of all game you've been pounding that sinker low and in. Well, you could throw a circle change low and in, and your the, your opponent is definitely he's gonna see sinker out of your hand, and he's gonna swing very early. But you've thrown a circle change, so the speed change is gonna be enough for him to be too early on that pitch, and he's gonna strike out. And you can also do the same thing with uh, with you know pitches that don't necessarily match up. You could throw a fast, you could keep throwing a fastball uh, low and in or up and in or something, and then you can start a slider in the same spot that you started that four seam fastball, but have it end up on the outside corner of the plate because that's the way a slider moves. For the first three fourths of the pitch, uh, once the pitch is three fourths of the way to the plate, your opponent the whole way is gonna be seeing fastball, but then at the very last moment, it's gonna break off, he's gonna realize it's a slider, but it's gonna be too late. He will have already swung and you will have already struck him out. So that's, I, I hope I did a good job of explaining what, what exactly tunneling pitches is. I think most people kind of have a grasp of it, but until they hear it articulated, it's kind of difficult to put it into practice uh, consistently. But once you do, it can be the most effective method of becoming a top pitcher in MLB The Show. Um, you'll see me kind of do it sometimes subconsciously. If you ever watch my streams or my gameplay videos, I'll do it kind of subconsciously. I'll, I'll just, I'll start tunneling pitches and all of a sudden I'm pitching a really, really good game because of it. And anytime I get away from it, that tends to be whenever I start getting hit really hard. So uh, yeah, just keep that in mind and use this advice and, uh, and I think you'll be fine on the mound for MLB The Show 18. I hope that this helps you improve your game. If it did, please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you guys later, but until then, peace. Hey.